Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about some high-powered storms that are going to be big hail producers with damaging winds and some isolated tornadoes, including some flooding rains. So if you do like weather-related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. And I do ask you to share this video with your friends and family on social media, All right? So let's get started. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is May 30th, Sunday. And man, check this out. Look at the record daily low temperatures taking place for much of the country this morning, all the way into the Ohio Valley, getting down to the deep south, into the southeast, as well as into the Carolinas and portions of uh, the northeast as well, experienced some definitely some cooler temperatures and unseasonably cold air mass uh, this morning. Let me kind of take you through the overall uh, satellite picture and kind of expand the view. So what's really happening? Uh, so man, look at that. I mean, some 30s happening in uh, Montana. That is your some of your record cold temperatures. They had some frost up here in portions of uh, you know Wisconsin, getting into Michigan. But in the middle of the country, that's where we have some uh, rain showers happening right now, uh, with some cooler temperatures into uh, Oklahoma City. And along the along the uh, northeast coast, there's uh, 48 in New York City, but all the way down to 77, getting into portions of Miami, and then 54 degrees along the uh, Pacific Northwest. So let me kind of take you, walk you through what's going to happen later on this afternoon, because we're going to be talking about some for more explosive supercell thunderstorms. This is the latest uh, helicity index. Uh, on the wrap model about four or five o'clock uh, this afternoon for uh, Sunday, May 30th. And man, you can look at this. I mean, we've got initiation of some super thunderstorms out here in portions of uh, New Mexico, getting back into uh, the Texas panhandle in far west Texas, where I do think we're going to be starting to see some of those explosive thunderstorms again with some big hell producers. Uh, later on this afternoon, these will continue moving across into the east, going into portions of uh, Texas as we get into the evening hours. But man, look at the updrafts we're dealing with on the 500 millibar wind pattern. And we've got a lot of southwest winds. That is going to be your explosive uh, adding the instability and the updrafts are going to be needed for those supercell big thunderstorms that are going to be firing along the dry line later on this afternoon. And even in the Northeast, we've got a lot of upward rising motion air that continues the rain showers and storm development uh, for portions of the Northeast as we go into this afternoon. But take a look at the overall precipital water uh, index, and that'll kind of give you an idea of where the atmosphere is more or less primed for uh, you know, rain showers and storm development as we get into the afternoon hours because, you know, your higher dew points, uh, the more potential of, you know, energy in the atmosphere that is going to be setting up over uh, portions of uh, West Texas, getting into portions of the deep south. You can see some purple here showing up in Florida. That is kind of a, a tropical low that's going to be moving across. That's going to be adding some rain showers and storm development back into the picture into central and southern Florida. But you can see the updrafts here coming along the coast uh, where you where you might see the, your, your higher rain amounts as we go into uh, the afternoon. And where all your brown shaded areas, that is indicative of your drier air. It's gonna be very difficult to rain <laughs> that type of atmosphere. But yes, as we take a look at the latest uh, wrap model of what it may look like by the time we get into say four or five o'clock this afternoon on sunday yeah we can start to see that dry line getting active again this whole area has been pretty active the last several days and man they had some very dangerous storms and uh, portions of oklahoma portions of uh, you know in, into texas uh, panhandle last night some of these storms in oklahoma were producing some baseball even up at times grapefruit size hell i saw one report so man this is some very serious stuff and that same type of stuff looks like to going to be taking place again over some of the same areas that took place uh yesterday as we go through the afternoon because yeah you can definitely see that active dry line getting its act together again and portions of uh, new mexico getting into the panhandle and that four that the three states here right along the uh, oklahoma border getting into a uh, 
portions of the you know the panhandle of oklahoma get into the southern portions of uh, nebraska here into the southern portions of colorado right there right here into, into uh, kansas here that's that's where, where it's going to be supercell thunderstorms right in that kind of region as we go throughout the day you can see the left into uh, florida that's where you're going to see some of the some of the you know, stronger storms as well and then up the coast we've got a lot of that updraft like i showed you that's going to be helping adding fuel to the fire and helping these storms initiate as once they start kind of taking advantage of some daytime heating and a lot of the areas in the northeast are going to be seeing uh, some storms uh, later on this afternoon so as we get into the day and take you through the overnight hours these will start to fade as they push eastward more or less into texas um you know, as you wake up on uh, you know your Memorial Day for Monday morning, you can definitely see where the where the rain is going to be. You know, I don't expect these to be severe at the moment because it's going to be the morning hours, but it's going to be getting closer into portions of you know, West Texas. That'll be feeding into say Wichita Falls, getting into uh, the portions of the Oklahoma, getting into Kansas, and these will continue to, uh, to move across as we get into the day on a Monday. Now, as we go into the day, uh, you know, afternoon hours into the daytime heating, that's again supercell thunderstorm development for a lot of the portions of uh, West Texas. We're talking maybe the Pecos area, get into Del Rio uh, with some big, big uh, hell producers uh, by then. These will continue shifting a little bit further, possibly into Lubbock, going into uh, Midland. Uh, these will continue to shift into uh, central texas and probably get into portions of uh, north texas as we get into the afternoon hours on uh, monday but probably not as you know obviously not as severe as they were out in uh, west texas because they will continue to start to uh, fade you know over time so as we go into that monday afternoon hour that's when that's where you can see as far as the precipitation water index where, where you're going to be more susceptible for those heavier rains. And again, that'll just push a little bit further to the east. That'll be setting up over portions of North Texas, getting into Oklahoma. They're going to be looking for a rainy afternoon for your Memorial afternoon, unfortunately. But yeah, getting into portions of a Houston again, deep, the deep south into south Texas. You know, Florida will be back into the action with more uh, storm development, more rain showers for central and southern Florida as that northeast system will continue to shift off uh, by then. But as we go into Tuesday, again, it just shifts a little bit further to the east. That'll be setting up shop over port, probably north Texas by then. We'll have that storm development move more into central Texas, uh, more into southern, uh, south Texas, San Antonio, Austin, Dallas. We'll be looking at some some strong uh, thunderstorms, maybe some severe thunderstorms uh, by then. These will continue shifting off into Arkansas, going into Kansas, going into Missouri. As uh, as again, that tropical low down in Florida will continue to have rain showers for them for the southern uh, tip of Florida. But yeah, that's the Storm Prediction Center that has already highlighted that marginal risk for severe weather extending into portions of Dallas, San Antonio, Austin, you know, some of your bigger cities as we go into uh, the day on Tuesday with those storm development continuing to push a little bit further off to the east and that'll get into uh, portions of uh, Arkansas and extreme portions of uh, Louisiana as we go into the day on the June 1st. That's your Tuesday time frame. So as we extend it on to Wednesday, again, it continues pushing off a little bit further to the east. Uh, that'll still be raining in Dallas. It'll still be raining in San Antonio, getting into Houston. But now it'll be entering the picture into uh, Louisiana, getting into Arkansas, more portions of uh, you know, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio by then. As we see that tropical low getting a little bit closer, and now we're starting to have to introduce those rain showers into portions of uh, the southern Georgia, uh, getting into the Carolinas, you know, as well as uh, North Carolina. As we go into the day on uh, Wednesday, as that tropical low will continue to get a little bit closer, impacting uh, portions of the southeast. And on Thursday, it just gets a little bit closer. That same system uh, still raining over Texas, raining over, you know, Austin, San Antonio, Houston getting in back into Lake Charles area, Baton Rouge area, 
uh, Shreveport area with more rain as those will continue moving across. It'll start probably feeding and coming, kind of coming together with that tropical low and that one system moving across. And that'll be setting the stage over more rain happening into Kentucky, going into Virginia's, West Virginia, parts of the Carolinas. As this will continue traversing up the coast into the mid-Atlantic states, uh, getting into uh, New England, it just remains high and dry for a lot of the areas out west. As we go into the day on uh, Thursday, your June the 3rd, as we just extend it into Friday, again, more rain into Texas, more rain into Louisiana. That tropical low will get a little bit closer. That'll be feeding more areas into the southeast, more areas into Virginia, into West Virginia, into uh, a lot of the areas into Washington, D.C., Pennsylvania, upstate New York, a lot of the a lot of the areas along the I-95 corridor will start seeing more rain for you guys. This will be extending all the way up into uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, going into Maine as we go into the day on uh, Friday. So now let's take a look at, you know, as you go into next weekend and what it may look like again. More rain in Texas is just like it never ends going into southern portions of the southeast that tropical low will get a little bit closer feeding into more a lot of the more areas into the southeast getting up the coast of uh into the mid-atlantic states by the time we get into this will be next saturday going into sunday uh june 5th june 6th time frame so now let's kind of take you back at where the rain has fallen from the previous seven days this is the uh, precipitation analysis for the last seven days this would basically be from Saturday to Saturday from May 22nd to May 29th time frame this is where the rain has fallen it's been very dry out a lot of the portions of the southeast I don't need to tell you that in California uh, but a lot of the areas in uh, Washington and Oregon getting into Montana you can see a lot where uh, the graph at the bottom here where the most of the rain has fallen into Texas and Oklahoma it was very dry into Florida and a lot of the southeast it's been pretty wet in portions of uh, the mid-Atlantic states getting into portions of uh, the northeast now let's take a look at what the precipitation is going to look like going forward so uh, this would be from today all the way through June the 6th so again a lot of the same areas pretty dry out west more rain for Texas. That's pretty much the bullseye of your highest rain amount of any state in the, in the country over the next seven days is Texas is going to be seeing probably the heaviest rainfall out of all the states. And then, you know, getting into Oklahoma, getting into the Kansas, this will feed off into the central part of the country into the Ohio Valley and some heavier rains pick back up again with that moisture feed with the tropical low and those two systems merging together into a lot of the areas in the northeast you can definitely see florida that's a big switch from the last seven days and going forward to the next seven days with more, more rain entering back in the picture especially for central and southern florida and getting back into the back into uh, the carolina states with south, Car south carolina as well as uh north carolina but fair, fairly dry for a lot of the areas into the the, the southeast so as we go into the day and take a look at even going forward, uh, this is the latest uh, you know, climate outlook from the Climate Prediction Center. This would be from that June 6th time frame to June 12th time frame. So this would be a ways away, but even showing you basically a lot of the same areas will be on, you know, where, where it's been pretty wet and, you know, Brown is soggy that those cooler temperatures remain locked and loaded over Texas. We do have a ridge that will be, that'll be building, especially getting back into the northeast by then with some very warm temperatures. But you can definitely see as we extend the view on the 8 to, 8 to 14 day precipitation water index, that's where all the some drier conditions will enter in back into the northeast remains dry out out uh, to the northwest and there's your heavier rains and we're you know you're going to see a lot of the heavier rains taking place between the 8 to 14 time frame and i'd be honest with you with this setup with this ridge that will be building over the northeast this is a classic type setup especially as we go into that you know june 10th time frame 
of probably tropical storm development in the Gulf of Mexico. So that is definitely something I'm going to be looking out for as we go into that June 10th time frame, maybe between the 10th and the 15th time frame is a little bit more prime for tropical storm development uh, by, by then. So that'll definitely give you an idea of what's going to be happening over the next uh, seven days and just extending the view and beyond. But we got a lot of big storms to be dealing with between you know, now and then, especially over the next couple of days. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video. Definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.